welcome to the Global Foundation for Democracy and Development. Mr. Ambassador, it's a great pleasure to have you here with us. Uh, Mr. Ambassador Alexandra Kuzba is with us from Moldova. And we are really delighted to have his presence. And we know that he has made an extra effort to be with us here because he's traveling in Washington, weather permitting, this afternoon. The foundation, as a part of its mission and its goal, would like to spread the news, knowledge, and understanding of other countries uh, to our audiences in the Dominican Republic, in the United States, and across the world. And also another mission that we are fulfilling through this program is to connect us and become closer and more knowledgeable about the United Nations, uh, what happens there, how can we help, how can we learn more, and how can we, as a nonprofit affiliated to the United Nations, participate more. So this is to give a little introduction to why we're all here and why we are really appreciating your time and your presence. So with us is uh, Ambassador Francis Lorenzo for Dominican Republic, and he will introduce Mr. Ambassador from Moldova. Thank you, Natasha, Your Excellency. I also would like to join the Executive Director of GFTD Global Foundation for Democracy and Development here in New York in thanking you for taking the time to be here in the first uh, uh, Global Round Table here at GFTD in New York in partnership with South and you, you as the permanent representative of the Republic of Moldova, as well as the Vice President of the ECOSOC, a member of the Bureau in 2010. You have uh, really done a great job when we talk about bringing uh, not only to the ECOSOC but also to the member states the success that Moldova, the Republic of Moldova has done when we talk about the achievement of the Millennium Development Goals. What, what I would like to do before perhaps maybe uh, Natasha uh, starts uh, as well as the members of the uh, Global Foundation for Democracy and Development here in New York is uh, to ask you and perhaps maybe give us uh, uh, a brief of the success that the Republic of Moldova has done when we talk about the achievement of the Millennium Development Goals. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Ambassador Lorenzo. Thank you, Nata Natasha, for inviting me. It is really a privilege for me to uh, attend uh, this event and to have the possibility to, to express uh, a few uh, thoughts and uh, to communicate uh, a couple of facts about Moldova. Moldova, uh, as you might know, is a pretty uh, young country. So this year we'll be uh, fortunate enough to celebrate the 20th anniversary of Moldova. Uh, just uh, uh, a couple of uh, uh, facts about Moldova. Uh, Moldova became independent after the collapse of the Soviet Union in 1991. And in these 20 years, we were able to make an extraordinary progress and to move forward from an authoritarian government and a closed economy to a democracy, a democratic state with an open political system and uh, a free market economy. So Moldova is uh, uh, located in the southeastern part of Europe. Uh, we are a landlocked country, even so we are close to the Black Sea. And uh, comparing to Dominican Republic, you have access to, to all the seas around. <laughs> <laughs> Moldova, Moldova uh, at the same time, uh, is uh, in good relationship with its two neighbors, Romania and Ukraine. So. Uh, um, as I mentioned, uh, in this transition period uh, from uh, that authoritarian and um, closed market to uh, a full-fledged democracy, Moldova undertook many reforms and it is still in this process of reforms. So while uh, adhering to the um, Millennium Development Goals that were adopted by the United Nations in 2000, Moldova took commitment also to mo modernize its economy, its political and social life. So uh, the uh, results achieved by Moldova are mixed. While we achieved some positive results in many fields, still we have to work hard in order to achieve those uh, benchmarks that were set up in 2000. And uh, hopefully we will be able to join many countries that would uh, announce in 2015 the positive results. 
Thank you, Your Excellency. Natasha. Thank you so, so much, Mr. Ambassador. And uh, I would like just to take the opportunity now that we have been introduced here to introduce my colleagues from the Global Foundation who are here at the table. And just uh, for us to be aware that there is a Global Foundation for Development and Democracy team that's waiting here for questions. And also we have some questions that we have received online uh, through the internet because we have audiences in the States, in the Dominican Republic and across the world who have a few questions for you. And I would like just to say a few more words about the Global Foundation and what we do. And I'm hoping that maybe by the end of this conversation, we will realize how much Dominican Republic and Moldova might have in common, how much our challenges and our tasks are similar, and how much maybe Global Foundation and we can learn from you and maybe join some other institutions of your country in the work that we are doing and contribute and exchange experiences and, uh, and best practices. So the Global Foundation for Democracy and Development was founded in 2000 in the Dominican Republic. Our first offices were in Santo Domingo and still are. It was created by the current president of the Dominican Republic, Leonel Fernandez, and um, after his first mandate, uh, there were four years where he wasn't governing the country and we were building the foundation in these four years, working very hard and then he went back into the government and now he's currently in his third mandate. Uh, we continued operating as a nonprofit and we opened offices in Washington and in New York. I myself live in Washington and travel to New York very often and our team is a bit split between the two offices and internationally. And our task is and mission is to promote the exchange and collaboration between the United States and the Dominican Republic, but also between the Dominican Republic and the world. And the reason we are here at the 48th uh, Street and the 3rd Avenue is precisely because we want to be close to the United Nations. We want to learn, we want to participate in the effort. And we constantly develop uh, numerous projects in uh, all scopes of work that the United Nations actually deal with, which is anything from democracy, social development, education, environment, gender, um, issues of uh, human rights, uh, issues uh, of uh, broad agenda, international affairs, anything that uh, pertains to the Dominican Republic and the world. I would like you then maybe to address once again Moldova being a young country. What are the lessons learned? What were the biggest challenges and which ones you think have been overcome successfully? Thank you, Natasha, for your question. Yes, you mentioned uh, that Moldova is a young country. Obviously, 20 years cannot be compared with other states that have histories of uh, centuries and who went through uh, uh, different changes and different reforms while we are trying to um, have in those 20 years, maybe another 10 years, to achieve if not the same results, but the results that were achieved by so many democracies around the world. Uh, the biggest challenge, I think, for us was to change the mentality of people, because uh, being in an uh, authoritarian country, being controlled by the state, that actually uh, diminished significantly the interior liberty of people, the, the, the desire to create, to be open, to express your views. So this process of change took us some time and uh, uh, I would uh, uh, want to emphasize that uh, we learned a lot. Uh, Moldova is one of the new countries of the world that uh, ensured that transition of power from one party to another, from one president took uh, uh, place only through elections as and a result of elections. Of course, uh, we, as I mentioned, we still have a lot to, to, to learn since we had uh, in 2009 two rounds of parliamentary elections. Last year in November, again, we had parliamentary elections. So there are deficiencies in our political system that we still have to work on. On the other hand, transition in economy from uh, a closed governmental controlled economy yeah. to a market economy, I think that is the biggest challenge. 
because uh, uh, we had to privatize the whole uh, 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 industry in Moldova. Uh, people started to work on their own using the old connections, the old knowledge of uh, old markets, and at the same time to discover new markets where competition is really very tough. And, and uh, for Moldova, uh, uh, just uh, uh, transforming its economy, uh, it is really difficult to, to get access to those new markets. So maintaining our old positions, old markets, and opening new ones in order to allow Moldovan products to be known in the world and to ensure the quality, it is another challenge uh, for Moldova. So economic development, that would be one of the biggest challenges. And uh, also the place of Moldova in the world. Uh, from the year of 2007, when Romania joined the European Union, Moldova came closer to the EU became a neighbor of the European Union. And uh, uh, the uh, idea of European integration, the goal of being a part of the European Union became uh, uh, a common um, task for, I would say, 90% of our political parties and also people uh, expressed their full support of this uh, uh, goal European integration. So working hard on transforming our uh, political system, on uh, uh, modernizing our standards and laws according to the European standards, and also advancing in our uh, changes in society, in Moldovan society. Uh, that is, I, I would say, uh, the biggest challenges for us uh, with the ultimate goal, the European integration. Following exactly what you were saying about the, the, the integration in, into the, um, the European Union, what do you think, how do you envision the participation of Moldova in the European Union? Um, what would it represent to the country and what could the Moldovan uh, integration in the, in the European Union represent, bring about to the, to the Union? I think that the integration to European Union is a two-way process. Uh, it, uh, it is not only the desire of Moldova uh, to join the European Union, but also the acceptance of the European Union, of Moldova as a future uh, member of the EU. On the other hand, uh, uh, adhering to the European Union standards, to the norms EU norms, it is really a uh, um, beneficial process for Moldova because uh, we, uh, we have the experience, as I mentioned, of the former Soviet Union and we know very well how it is to live in an authoritarian state and, and try to survive the being unable to, to, to have this liberty of expression, of action. And, and uh, the uh, transition process to the EU, it is important for us not only as the goal itself of adhering to the European Union, but also of modernizing our life, our society, our economy. And uh, uh, in this regard, uh, the uh, two of our uh, governments uh, that were constituted by the alliance of uh, four and recently three parties, it is even named the Alliance for European Integration. So that is the ultimate goal and we'll be working hard to achieve it. After the collapse of the Soviet Union, um, there was some talk of Moldova and Romania uniting. Um, could you tell us the reasons uh, that people thought there should be unification and then my next question is the reasons why it didn't happen in eventuality. Uh, even so, the modern state, the Republic of Moldova, has uh, uh, 19 years since declaring its independence. The old uh, uh, principality of Moldova, um, it, it is from the 15th century. So we have a long history and during our uh, history, uh, it happened that uh, the territory of the current state, the Republic of Moldova, was either independent or part of Romania or part of the Russian Empire or under the uh, Ottoman rule. 
So uh, you can imagine that we have descendants of those people living in Moldova that, that uh, affiliated themselves with one or another party. Uh, I mean, uh, still we have uh, uh, so many Moldovans that grew up, that were educated and worked in the former Soviet Union. So they have some feelings towards their past. Uh, on the other hand, with Romania, we share our history, as I mentioned, our language. The, the, there are different feelings in Moldova. You rightly mentioned at the beginning of the 90s, we had some exponents of the uh, uh, unification with Romania. But on the other hand, uh, uh, no more than 10% of the politicians and, and uh, uh, population of Moldova supported that trend. Thank you. Thank you so much for that answer. We had another question. I think it, uh, Mr. Ambassador has mostly answered it, but I would just like the question to be asked because it was received on internet by one of our viewers. And uh, if there is anything else you feel like you would like to add, you're welcome. Yeah. Yes, uh, Fermin Gomensoro from Argentina, uh, in fact, was uh, asking, um, following what you were saying, in fact, um, taking into account recent history and the adoption of Romanian as the official language, is there any political movement supporting an unification with Romania at this time? If yes, would Moldovans vote in favor of, su of such initiative? As I mentioned, we had parliamentary elections in 2009 and 2010, and we have one political party that uh, openly declared the unification with Romania as its ultimate goal. Uh, that party accumulated less than uh, 1%. So uh, the results speaks for themselves, and, and all the other parties that are represented in our parliament uh, uh, they do not have any any uh, uh, mentioning in the, the political programs regarding the possible uh, refusal to our uh, independence and sovereignty. Thank you, Mr. Ambassador. Uh, talking about the Millennium Development Goals and the second one about the universal education, and knowing that you had increased the preschooler education from 44% in 2000, to 75% in 2009. Do you think that you are going to achieve uh, this particular uh, goal by tw tw the 2015? I think yes, and I will explain why. Um, in former Soviet Union, we had almost universal primary education, and we inherited that, that uh, system. Of course, we transformed our education system also according to European standards, and uh, I would not uh, argue with the uh, statistical data that you indicated. Most probably, yes, somewhere on the internet you found that mm -hmm. the percentage. Mm -hmm. uh, and I do not possess the exact data right now. I know that for sure it is more than 40% and more than, I would say, 70%. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, I am pretty sure that we will definitely achieve the, 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 uh, the uh, figure that was indicated in the Millennium uh, Declaration mm -hmm. by the year of 2015. Yeah. I'd like to know what you would say was the greatest environmental challenges for Moldova. The use of land. Uh, in Moldova we have um, almost 60 percent of farmland that could be uh, used for producing fruits, vegetables, other uh, agricultural products. At the same time, the uh, proper use of that land is really a challenge for us. Kind of expanding on what you said earlier about seeking new markets, would you say uh, organic farming would be a viable market for Moldova? And are you doing anything about uh, tapping into that market? Yes, organic farming would be, of course, we need technologies and modern technologies. On the other hand, uh, during uh, this transition period, we didn't have enough resources to invest in, in uh, pesticides and other, other uh, um, uh, substances that would preclude us of entering this organic market. So at this moment, uh, we uh, have the capabilities to enter this market. We just need the uh, proper management of land. We need modern technologies. And of course, we need the marketing of our products in, uh, and in strong competitions with other uh, producers. 
we would like to give you this little present from the foundation. It's a book on the Dominican Republic. We didn't talk much about the Dominican Republic, but we definitely hope you will have some time to see the book and maybe visit us. And then here is a little bit of information on the Global Foundation, what we do. And we are extremely interested in maybe coming in contact with organizations in your country that do similar work, some nonprofits or foundations or institutions that promote socioeconomic development in different areas. So we really hope to stay in touch with you and we thank you for your time. Natasha, I thank you, I thank Ambassador Lorenzo and all of your colleagues for inviting me, for having this possibility to express uh, uh, the, the, the results that Moldova achieved during its transition period and to uh, also to let people around the world know about Moldova because we are a small country and we do not have so many diplomatic missions. Unfortunately, we do not have a diplomatic mission in the Dominican Republic and uh, uh, I sincerely hope that uh, after reading this book, I will have the possibility to, to compare the uh, 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 images from the book with the reality. <laughs> so uh, I, I, I thank you very much once again for inviting me and for having this uh, stimulating and interesting discussion. Thank you so much. Thank you. Mr. Ambassador, don't worry about it. Our next invitation to you will be in the Dominican Republic. <laughs> so you will be able to come to the Dominican Republic. Natasha, thank you so much. I would like to congratulate you for the initiative. Also, Mr. Ambassador, would like to congratulate you, Prime Minister, for all the achievement that your country have had when we talk about the achievement of the Millennium Development Goals. And Natasha, I will see you in the next uh, uh, Global Roundtable. Thank you.